Jeff for that. I found a cell phone in the pulpit. Just want to make sure nobody lost their cell phone. All right. We'll auction it off after church today. Highest bidder will have a new cell phone. Oh, it's Paul's? All right, we'll definitely sell it. So looking for $500 <laughs> starting bid. All right, Luke chapter number two. We better get into some preaching before we cause some chaos. <laughs> then I'd end up in the principal's office. You ever had that happen? You had that one friend that you always hung around that got you in trouble and you ended up in the principal's office because of that one friend and you're questioning your whole friendship with that person all right Luke chapter number two in verse number one and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed and this is then this taxing was first made when Cyrus was governor of Syria and all went to be taxed every one into his own city and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of out of the city of Nazareth into um, Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his spouse wife, being great with child, and so it was that while they were there. The days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. And there were in the same country sh uh, shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks, uh, flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, 
For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Here's the title of the message that the Lord gave me for this hour's um, uh, significance of Christmas. Significance of Christmas. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all you do for us, Lord. I pray that you would be in the service today, Lord. I pray that you would walk the pews today, Lord, to our hearts, and pray that you would give us something from your message today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. As we enter the Christmas season, we don't want to miss the significance of Christmas. Now, Mary, when the day was accomplished, it says in verse number uh, 19 of the chapter there, it says that she stepped back and pondered what just happened. Luke 2.19 says, But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. There was something that happened. Now, of course, we go back to Luke 1, and we read Luke 1, and read the, how the angel appeared to her not many days before and said, you're going to have a baby. And this is how you're going to have that baby. You know, the Lord found favor with you, Mary, and now you're going to bring his son into the world. And Mary just thought, you know, I want to ponder on some things here. There's some important things that just took place that needs to not to be forgotten. Now here in a few days, we will decorate, if we haven't decorated already, we will exchange gifts with one another. We will have the feast and all the fixings that goes with that feast. And as we gather around a Christmas tree and uh, we look at Christmas lights and uh, Christmas cookies are served or anything that has to do with Christmas, let's not miss the significance of Christmas. Now, you know, our world is messed up. Our society is messed up. When you look at our world, when you look at um, our society and how messed up it is when it comes to Christmas, I mean, it is scary. There's been, we've been driving around looking at Christmas lights. We love Christmas lights. You know, we love it when someone decks their house out and, you know, there's all these lights everywhere. You know, this coming weekend, we're going to go look at three houses. Every year we go to this property, they have um, a light show that they have synchronized to music, a whole program for five hours that's synchronized to music. There's a house we go to every year, three houses puts inflatables every square inch of their yard is nothing but inflatables. And then they have arches going down the sidewalk. And, you know, it's nice to look at that. But something I've noticed this Christmas season is 
nativity scenes. Have you ever looked at a nativity scene and there was something missing from that nativity scene? The babe in the manger. And I've made comments to my wife in recent days. I'm like, how do you have a nativity scene without Jesus Christ, who's part of the nativity scene? He's the most important reason of the nativity scene. And without the babe in the manger, you don't have Christmas. Our society is so messed up. You know, just go walk down the aisles of the Christmas decorations and see how much of those, de uh, those decorations are dedicated to Santa Claus, Rudolph, or, you know, some other, you know, Frosty or something. Or, you know, and if you go to Hobby Lobby, I mean, Hobby Lobby, it's scores and scores and scores of scripture stuff. But if you go to Walmart or anywhere of that nature, you will see what they promote. You see that our society, they start promoting Christmas in September. You see that they start promoting the Christmas music in uh, November. But our world and our society has gotten away from the significance of Christmas. As we approach the message, we want to leave here today not forgetting the significance of Christmas. Yes, we know the uh, Christmas story. Yes, we know every detail of it. We hear it every year. We hear uh, the same scriptures. And yes, we know the significance of Christmas, but let's revisit, because there's times we need to revisit it and just remind ourselves a little bit about the importance of Christmas so we don't forget about it. Let's revisit the significance of that night in Bethlehem. Allow me, with the Lord's help today, to submit the significance of Christmas that we ought not to forget this Christmas. The first thing I want to give you is an uncommon birth. Go back to verse number 7 of the chapter there. In verse number 7, it says, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Now, let's look at this uncommon birth. This isn't a way for a child to be born. This isn't a way to have a child to be born in a stable. Now, let me go a little further. Normally, a child is born in a hospital. Not a stable. Normally, a child is placed in comfort. Not a feeding trough. Normally a child is placed in warmth, warm towels or blankets and they're given a cap to keep their head warm. Not wrapped in swaddling clothes. And let me sh tell you something about this unbirth here. Because there is a significance behind the swaddling clothes. We see two times in Luke chapter 2 where it says in verse number 7 how they wrapped him in swaddling clothes. And then a little later it said they would find him wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. But what was so, com what was so common about the significant clothes? The significant clothes was to picture his death. We already get a picture at his uh, birth of his death with that swaddling clothes, but a babe wasn't wrapped in swaddling clothes. Something else I see here is normally a child is showered by family. Now, I know you probably don't remember the day you were born. I mean, I don't have no recollection of the day I was born. I don't have no knowledge of who was at my birth, you know. But I'm sure there was family at my birth. I'm sure, you know, my grandparents was there. I'm sure, you know, my older brother was there. I'm sure um, many family members gathered around at Pontiac General Hospital on March 16th, maybe not at 530 in the morning, 
But throughout the day, I'm sure they gathered around to come and see me, you know, to welcome me into the world. But this birth here was showered by animals. See, here, here's where they couldn't find anywhere. They went, I'm sure they went from hotels to hotels to hotels asking for a room, begging them to let them stay somewhere, give them some kind of room. And I'm sure, as it seemed hopeless, the last hotel they go to, the innkeeper says, I don't have no room, but I have a stable out in the back. There's animals in there. I mean, you're more than welcome to use it. But have you ever thought of that innkeeper. Maybe if we were able to interview him and ask him, you know, you, you, taught, you had the Messiah that was born in your manger, in your feeding trough, in your stable. How does it feel? Well, that's an uncommon birth. But it, his birth was very uncommon. But why is a uncommon birth significant at Christmas time. Well, Philippians 2, 6 through 7 says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. What made his birth a uncommon birth is one reason. He did not need a reputation. You know, yes, he could have said, I'm God's son. Yes, I'm God Almighty. Yes, you know, I'm King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Why would I want to die? Why would I want to be born in a stable? I'm a king. I deserve a palace. Yes, I'm a king. I deserve the warm blankets, the warm towels. Yes, he says, I'm a king. Yes, he says, 100% God, 100% man. But he humbled himself and became a servant for us. But because he became in the likeness of man. And we can read about that in John chapter number 1. How he took on the flesh. We can read in the book of Luke. How he was made in the likeness of man. You know, we read in our text here today. He came just like anyone else came. To a natural birth. He came just like anyone else. Why? Because he didn't have a reputation. His father had a plan. He knew that plan. And he said, you know what? Let's stick to the plan. But we would say this birth is uncommon. No baby ought to be born like this. And we think, and we think this, is, this uncommon was common birth for him to come God's way. We think it's uncommon, but it was common to his father. It was common that he came this way. But then here's the second thing I see here. The second significant of Christmas. I see the echoing message. Go to verse number 17 of the chapter here. Verse 17 of Luke chapter number 2. In verse 17 and 18, And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Now drop down to verse number 20 here. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. You know, I see the echoing message. I mentioned this last week. We see the message the angel brought that night. Go back to verse number 11 of the chapter there, the message that still echoes, the echoing message that echoed through the city of David, through Bethlehem, through Judea, as it went through all the different cities. And verse number, uh, what did I say, verse number 11? Verse number 11, 
And for, uh, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And the message was so great that the shepherds spoke of the message. Now, many think that it was a silent night. Many think that, you know, he came and it was silence. But my friend, that night was a very loud, with a very loud message that spoke that the Messiah has come. And the message echoes to this very day. When, when we go out soul winning, we are speaking the same message that the shepherd spoke over 2,000 years ago. When we go out and we hand a gospel track out and we tell someone the greatest news in all the world, we're giving the same news that the shepherds gave that night. The Messiah has come and he has died for you. You know, something I see about the shepherd, let me uh, continue, let me not get ahead of myself here, but I see the echoing, the echo from the angel first to Mary. Luke chapter number 1, verse number 30, and verse number 31, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and, because, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring, for, and, um, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. There's the echo from the angel to Mary first. Mary, you found favor with God. God has favor with you. He's chose you to give birth to his son. But then the angel said, I bring you good tidings of great joy, and it's to all People, the message that they brought was the message of fear not. I see the message of joy. I see, as I said, I see the message of fear not. You don't have to be afraid. I have a message of joy for you. But then here's something else I have. The message of salvation and we see that message in verse number 11. For unto you 